Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. For 2023, I'm going to be redoing and organizing all of my Topaz Labs videos, beginning with today's video. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to best utilize Topaz Labs Denoise AI as a Lightroom plugin. In a week or two, I'll do another video talking about how to use it as a Photoshop plugin, and I'll then do a third video talking about how to use it as a standalone app. My plan is to do similar videos for Sharpen AI, Gigapixel AI, and Photo AI, and to have all of those videos available in a single playlist. I'm going to call that playlist Topaz Labs 2023. As a matter of fact, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. The reason why I'm doing this is because I've been using these applications since they were released. And over that time, I've developed some methods and discovered some techniques that maximize their effectiveness. And I want to share that with you for all of the apps in all of the different situations you might use those apps and have all of those videos available in a single playlist so you could watch them when you need to. Now I mentioned today we're going to be talking about how to best use Denoise AI as a Lightroom plugin. You can see that I have an image opened up in Lightroom. It was shot at ISO 64. If I zoom in, you can see there is a considerable amount of noise. Now this is an unedited RAW file. What I recommend you do is if you're going to use Denoise AI as a Lightroom plugin, that you send the image from Lightroom to Denoise AI as early in your workflow as possible. And you send the full resolution image. For example, this image, I didn't frame it perfectly. So I would probably want to crop it. So I'd go to the crop tool and I'd probably pull down over here to something like this. The problem when you do that is you're cropping away a lot of pixels. And what I found is Denoise AI works best when it has all of the pixels there to work with. So definitely don't crop before you send it. Crop after it comes back. So I have this image, full resolution, don't crop it. Also, don't do any editing to it that may enhance contrast or may increase the noise or make the noise more obvious because then it's more difficult for Denoise AI to get rid of that noise. So you're not going to want to go over to the basic tab and move contrast or highlight shadows, whites, blacks. Definitely don't want to add any texture clarity or dehaze. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't even add any vibrance or saturation. So don't do anything over here. As a matter of fact, you want to do as little as possible. But there are a few things that really only could be done to the raw file, or at least most effectively can be done to the raw file. And if you need to do them, you should do them before you send it to Denoise. One of those things has to do with profiles. If I open up the profile browser, this is a raw file. And what you'll find that if you're working on a raw file, most often you'll have a category here called camera matching. These camera matching profiles will only be available to the raw file. And we send it over into Denoise AI, we're going to be sending it as a TIFF file, maybe PSD, maybe even a JPEG, most, most often a TIFF file. And if you do that, you're going to lose these camera matching profiles. So if you plan to use a camera matching profile, do it now. You have to do it now because you're going to lose them. Also, there are some third-party profiles that might be lost as well. It depends on the developer who developed the profile. He may or she may have made that profile available uh, for use only with the raw file. So you may lose that as well. So choose a profile if you're going to be changing profile away from Adobe Color. Now, the other thing has to do with white balance. White balance is more effective on a, or white balance adjustment is more effective on a raw file than it is on any other file type. So if you need to adjust the white balance, I would do that here as well. Uh, that's the second thing that you should do before you send it to Denoise AI. So we talked about some things you shouldn't do. Don't do anything that's going to affect tone or increase contrast or increase sharpness or anything like that. What you should do is white balance and what you should do is uh, profile if you need to. Also, don't crop it. The other thing is drop down to detail. A lot of times Lightroom adds default sharpening. Take it all down to zero. 
and add some default noise reduction, take it down to zero. Color noise reduction, on the other hand, Lightroom is actually really good at it. It's just as good as Denoise AI. So this is optional. I keep this usually at 25. So that I keep at 25 and I don't worry about that. Finally, you may have to do lens corrections if you're working with a DSLR. This was shot with a Nikon D500, which is a DSLR. So I would come in here and just click these two boxes, enable profile correction. That is all I would do. And then now I would send it to Denoise AI. I'm maximizing the potential of Denoise AI sending the image like this without any tone adjustments, contrast, texture clarity, sharpness, any Lightroom noise reduction done to it. Send it like this. Right click right on it, go down to edit in and go over and down to Topaz Denoise AI. Now, most often when you're using plugins with Lightroom, you cannot send the raw file. You cannot send the raw file to Denoise AI. That's why I'm making this big fuss about what you can and can't do before you send it there. They recommend you send a TIFF. So that's what we'll do. We'll TIFF Pro Photo RGB 16 bits 300 dat blah blah blah. And we'll click edit. You can see in the left hand corner up here at the top there is a progress bar. Lightroom is actually creating that TIFF file and then it will open it up. It will have those specs and it will open it up into Denoise AI. Now there's different views you could use in Denoise AI. If you look up here at the top, you'll see if I hover, there's single view, there's side by split, or there's split view, I'm sorry, then side by side view, then what's called comparison view. I like to start out in comparison view because there are five different AI models. And I like to see them next to one another and compare to them to one another and determine which one is best of the four I could look at. So I could see four of the five at one time and then determine which one might be better. Now to reposition, you could just click on any of the images and move it around. It will move all four of the images in comparison view around. You have the option to go on up to the navigator window and moving this around as well, right? What I like to do is get kind of a piece of the subject and a little bit of the background and just get an idea then uh, which one of these AI models might be most effectively removing noise from both the subject and the background, and maybe which one is a little sharper than the others. Now, we're looking at four. On the top left-hand corner, we have the standard profile there. What we want to do, though, is at the beginning, compare apples to apples, oranges to oranges. So what you want to make sure is that when you click on the first one, the top left-hand corner one, which for me happens to be standard, yours might be in different order, too but top left hand corner standard, make sure that model preferences is on auto. So we want auto preferences for everything so that we're comparing apples to apples, oranges to oranges. We'll click on clear. You can see that one isn't on auto. So we'll put that on auto and get a look at that. And that definitely is not as good as standard. We'll go over in the lower left, that's low light. That isn't on auto either, put that on auto. And you can see that isn't as good as standard. And then finally in the lower right, we have severe noise. That one's not on auto either. We'll put that on auto. And that one is probably not quite as good as standard either. Now there is a fifth AI model. It happens to be called RAW and it works best on RAW files. This isn't a RAW file, it's a TIFF file. When you use Denoise AI as a standalone app, you could send a RAW file directly into it. And in that instance, the RAW AI model might come into play. Here, I don't think it's going to work very well. What I often will do though, is I'll pick the worst of the four. In this case, it happens to be clear. I'll click on that. And of course it came off auto again. But then once that's active, you can see it has this blue rectangle, lower left hand corner. Just click on raw and you'll swap that out with the raw profile. And you can see that is nowhere near as good as what the clear was, even if I put that on auto. So clear was better than that. But of the four, it looks like standard is the best. Severe noise might have removed a bit more of the noise, but it's not quite as sharp as standard. I'm not sure that's coming through in the video. So what I'll do is I'll go back to standard, came off auto again. This is kind of a bug, I think. Should stay on auto. Now you do have the option, I should add, you should go up to AI model and you could put this, turn this on. Now it won't allow you to do it when you're in comparison view. But if you're in single view, you could go here click that and it will 
pick what it feels is the best model. It's been my experience that it doesn't work as well as you eyeballing them and you determining which one is the best model. Eyeballing them, I think standard is the best model. Then what I would do is make that active, click on it, and then I'll go to single view. Now I could see it all by itself. Now I'm going to zoom in a little more, so I'm going to go up to this uh, area here and click and go to 200%. And I need, if I need to reposition it, I could. I could just click right on it, or I could go over here to the navigator window and move this rectangle around. But I like it. Make sure that you wait for it to update. So if I did move it, it has to update, and you'll see on the lower left-hand corner it updates. Now, it looks pretty good. There's a little bit of noise in the background. So I'm still on auto. Well, I'm going to remove noise a little more. We'll move that to the right. And then I'll just keep, keep tweaking it up till I'm satisfied. What I want to make sure I'm not doing is blurring out any detail. Because if you put remove noise too far to the right, you're going to start to lose some detail. So I want to preserve the detail, but still remove the noise. There's kind of a fine line here. Now you do have the option to go here and enhance sharpness. You could do that but you'll start to reintroduce noise. You can see just a little bit of noise came back in here. It did make it a tiny bit sharper. That's more of a subtle adjustment. Down here, this slider, which has nothing to do with auto, by the way, auto only affects these two sliders. These two sliders are not affected by auto. You could come here and recover original detail, but that will also reintroduce noise. It's a bit more heavy handed than enhanced sharpness is. And you can see that did enhance noise a lot. So what I want to do is I want to keep that relatively low, like around 10. Now we did color noise reduction in Lightroom. If you didn't do it in Lightroom, you would move this slider to the right. Just a little bit though, you really don't need a lot of color noise reduction. Um, it's very effective whether you use it in Lightroom or you use it here into Noise AI. So here I don't need to use it. But what I want to do is still get rid of that noise. Let's move this up maybe to 55. That looks pretty good. Then what I'll do is I'll drag around this navigator window and just make sure that it looks good everywhere that's important. I do plan on cropping out the top right hand side, so I'm not really concerned over there. I am concerned with the golden tamarind's um, face. Gold, golden lion tamarind is technically what this um, simian is called. But that looks pretty good all the way around. Particularly when I look in the darkest areas, that's uh, going, you'll find that'll be where it will be more difficult to remove noise. And you want to make sure that your detail is preserved, especially in this, the golden lion tamarind's face. So that looks pretty good. So I'm satisfied with it. I'll just click apply. And then it will bring us back to Lightroom. And now we could edit it like we wanted to from the beginning. Now, just do a quick edit on it to show you what I would do to this image. I would come in and go to the crop tool right away and I would pull down over here and I'd bring this rule of thirds right across the Tamron's eyes just like that and we'll go to edit and I'll go to the basic tab and I just it's really bright in here what I tend to do is zoom in a little bit and I'll go to this highlights I'll just bring this down just enough where I'm seeing some detail kind of get rescued in here and then I'll go a tiny bit further and then zoom back out and then I'll open up shadows just to open up so I could see the eyes see his eyes kind of come through a little more like that then I'll get a white and black point I'll hold the alt or option key it's in it's alt if you have PC option if you have a Mac and move this to the right and then when it starts to bleed through like that it means you're starting to clip those channels you can see I'm clipping the red channel primarily I'll just back that off till that just dissipate and same thing for the blacks and I don't mind clipping that a little bit I'm clipping you can see the green channel a little bit like that now we'll add some texture I'll add some clarity I'm not going to add any vibrance or saturation because that is what that color of that animal was and I don't want to misrepresent what this animal actually looks like by making it more vibrant than it actually is or more saturated because that's really what it looked like so I'm going to leave it at that um, we could go to detail and maybe then add a little sharpening feel we need to and effects just make this a quick edit like that 
And that's it. That's my edit on this uh, golden lion tamarind that I took in the Buffalo Zoo. And you can see that it's noise free, nice and sharp. Looks great. And that's it. That's how you should best utilize using Denoise AI as a Lightroom plugin. I hope that made sense. Uh, I mentioned in a week or so, I'll do a second video. In the second video, I'm going to use it as a Photoshop plugin. And I'm going to do a third video. We're going to use it as a standalone application. And again, I'm going to do similar videos for Sharpen AI, Gigapixel AI, and Photo AI. And I'm going to have all of those videos in a single playlist that's going to be called Topaz Labs 2023. But you don't have to worry about that because I'll have it linked in the description below every single video, including this one. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.